Hey guys, this is Daniel, Dr. D, and uh, this is the last day I'll see this thing. It's been fun, and uh, like I said before, yeah, I've had this, I don't know, I think I've had this going on three years, and uh, I was playing Scott Hamilton's album right here, and uh, first thing you notice when you play this is the way the saxophone stands out. And uh, I'm replacing this stuff with this. This is the ST35 I was telling you guys about. I have no idea why there are no reviews on them. But I'm telling you, if you want a sound that is uh, like uh, just balanced across the board, this one does that. It's the only one out of all these amplifiers that has a warm sound, with the exception of the ST120, but that's solid state. So even though it sounds fairly holographic, it's not as much as this, though. So this takes it to the, you know, to the ultimate level. Tons of power, tons of bottom end. 17 and a half watts is just huge amount of power for, for these speakers. These are the uh, Klitsch Fortes. Super efficient. Even with this, I, even with that little uh, amplifier, I can drive the heck out of these speakers. But this is even more so. But uh, like I say, if you want to work with tone controls, you can tone control any of these, but you also add some of the other background noise elements along with that. So I wanted something that played, to my likings, completely flat, and this does that. And uh, when you first, one of the things I noticed when I first started out with these is, is when you first hear saxophones, they stand out really well. And at first, it sounds appealing to the ear. And you're like, wow, man, it really comes out. It, it really comes at you. And it's very isolated. But after a while, I started to notice it just gets fatiguing over time, especially at nighttime when I'm playing at like 65 decibels, 60 decibels, and I'm playing this really mellow jazz. When I started using this thing, it just, my ears, it was just so soothing. And this is truly a warm sounding amp. If you want a warm sounding amp, this is the warmest one I've heard in my life. Um, <clears throat> this also is run with the, uh, what I have on here for tubes are the uh, Mullards from Great Britain. And I think there's some knockoffs they did from Russia, but these are the British uh, Mullards. And I had the stock tubes that Kenny uh, had. These here are the Baldwin, uh, EL84s. And I think, I could be wrong, I'm not an expert on that area, but I think those tubes are what produces the sound signature that you get with this thing. This is nothing like any of the other Dynacos. It doesn't sound like an ST70. It's completely different. It's, uh, the ST70 has a much, uh, it has a, has a more analytical sound compared to this. This has a very laid back very warm sound. It's a true warm sounding uh, tube amplifier because I, I don't find these tube amplifiers to be warm, just in general. And uh, I know that a lot of the ones that are coming overseas now, their their whole direction they're going now with modern tube amps, particularly those those knockoffs from China that are just coming in dime a dozen, the ones that all the other YouTubers, all they talk about, like the Wilson Tim, for example, that R8. That's a good amplifier. When we first tried it, you'll see it in one of my videos, and I raved about how fun it was with the open baffles. It's great. It's just that it's very bright. So if you have a room that is not treated, it's going to probably be a little annoying to the ear over time. So you need to have uh, a well-treated room if you want to have those kind of amplifiers. The, with the way my room is treated, because, you know, I'm dealing with my wife as well, you know, and the uh, way this room is treated, this thing... Is, sounds the most perfect to my ears. And despite the fact that I have all the other amplifiers here, I still sit and listen to this one. This is the one I enjoy by far the most. So I already ordered a second one from Kenny Russell at Fantastic Ventronics for the other system. And what, what, what happens, uh, what you can do and what I notice is that where these leave off, and I'm not a powerhead, I don't go nuts and stuff and play Led Zeppelin and stuff, but if you say you want to, you can do that with this. This thing will rock out easily with the Heritage Series. No problem. With, and then some. Um, there was also a comment on the ST, the original ST35 where they said something like, it doesn't have 
what was it? It didn't have the thunder. I think I mentioned in a previous video that the ST35 doesn't have the thunder that the ST70 does. And I completely disagree with that. This thing does. There's no biasing capability. There is an option to, to bias. Hey, Benjamin. There's, there's an option to bias. How you doing, little buddy? How you doing? Okay. Um, for a, I think it's like $100 or $150 upgrade you can get. Um, but I didn't want to get that installed. And the reason was is because I had the ST70 for a period of time and my friend John Pons had measured the tubes even after three years and they were perfect. I mean, there was nothing wrong with them and I just never found myself messing with them. So these are match quads and I have two sets of them. Um, so like I say, uh, by the way, this is an ultra linear push-pull amplifier, ultra linear. It's not triode. It, it, uh, Kenny Russell has this set up as an ultra linear. That's what he told me. 17 and a half watts of channel. It is a monster with the, this. And where these other amplifiers, like say you want to turn it up, and they get loud. Don't get me wrong. They get, they get loud. This gets loud too. But if you really don't want to have to worry about bass, you don't, you know, how fast it is. This has a solid state rectifier. I think my understanding is that's how the ST35s originally were. They had, they were just all solid state rectifiers. And I, man, I could not be more pleased. It's, it's really unique. It's not like any of the other tube amps I've had. It is the only amp, tube amp that truly, truly has a warm sound signature like you cannot believe. And it's just so pleasant for long periods of listening. And like I say, if you have, you know, if you want bright speakers or you have a speaker that has a little, you know, a little sparkly on the top end, you want to kind of tame it a little bit, this is the ultimate, man. It has all the qualities of that solid state 120 right here, except it just has that extra element of airiness and openness uh, with all the warmth. It's just so beautiful. I can't, oh, I can't even tell you. Sorry, you guys on YouTube. You guys should be ashamed of yourself for never having tried this thing. It is incredible, man. Incredible. Uh, 1300 bucks with the tubes, 50 bucks shipping. That's what it paid. Also, I want to thank Holger at Earhart Audio. He made this thing for me. This uh, Aretha, I have to give it credit. It's been the preamp that I've used for most of my videos. I also want to thank Kenny Russell at Fantastic Ventronics for making a beautiful Pass M. And I use that on the other system upstairs. And uh, they're just fantastic. They both work beautifully with this, uh, with it, this amplifier. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free. Any thoughts. But this is, hands down, the best Dynaco ever made. And I've tried a few. So you know me. Take care.